Hello guys, today I'm going to be going through a question on a partnership financial position. So the objective of this video is for you to gain a better understanding of what the format or structure looks like for a statement of financial position for a partnership. Okay, we've had a look at the income statement, the additional section on there, which is appropriation. That is one of the key differences between a sole trade and a partnership is the appropriation section and for the financial position majority of it is the same except for the bottom part the finance by section that is slightly different and that's what i'll be going through with you today so to get started off this particular question is not it's not it's not an aqa question i've found it from somewhere else from another examining board for accounting however it will still work for understanding purposes so feel free to, to, to pause the video to have a quick go at this question before we move on to part two okay so this is 6.3a pause now to have a quick go at the question before we move on to part two okay so what i'm going to do now is just go through go through this similar question to to um, the part two video okay in the powerpoint so it was a similar question to this so let's get straight into the question so we have two partners john and kim we've got a debit balance we've got a credit balance and they're entitled to a profit share okay so for this kind of question what you're probably best doing is drawing up i'm just going to do a very simple one on here using this particular option i'm not no artist but it, it does the job so we've got 750 on the debit side and we've got for kim we have a 400 credit balance let's just get that in there at some point i might invest in one of these fancy pieces of technology that will allow me to write on the screen but for now this is what i'm going to have to work with so we've got 750 debit balance 400 on the credit side each partner is entitled to six and a half and as you know six and a half profit share will come on to the credit side that's an increase remember you've got your decrease and you have your increase okay and a profit share is is a good thing that's going to increase so you put six and a half come on and the same for Kim, six and a half. And if you balance those off, you should get, for Kim, nice and easy, 6,900. So you've got 6,900. And that is a credit balance. We'll cross the W out. Um, John, 650 positive minus 750 is 5750. Okay, so this is part one to this question is calculating their current account balances, which we have done. Okay, so we're going to use this in a few moments time. Okay, it mentions that these need, need to go into the statement of financial position, which is the question uh, and the main focus of this video. Okay, so this is the question. We've got a trial balance. And we've got a list of information in there as you would normally expect and we need to use this to draft a financial position okay what i'm going to do first i'm going to just leave that there um, what you may want to do is pause the video now and against each one remember this is not we're not doing an income statement we are just doing a financial position feel free to pause the video now uh, and just go through on the left hand side would it be an asset or a liability non-current or current okay so feel free to pause and i'm going to do this with you now okay so accruals i'm just going to put l or a let's just um, admin expenses doesn't go into the fp i'm going to skip that we've got allowance for doubtful debts this comes off slc so i'm going to put it i'm going to put an a there a bit too big i'm going to put an a there 
uh, and I'm going to just write SLC just here because that will need to be come off the SLC. Remember that's a provision. Okay, we've got two figures. That is your income statement figure, and that is your FP. Okay, again, you should know this by now. We've got bank is a debit, so it's an asset. Both of these two, they are going to go into the finance buy section, so they are still relevant. We have cash, which is an asset. We have closing inventory, which is an asset, a current asset. We've got the current accounts. Now, these ones we don't need to use. Okay, we don't need to use these because we've already taken the opening balances along with the information above. If you have a quick look, 750 and 400. Okay, 750, 400. We've already used these opening balances, put the profit in, and we've got the new closing balances. So we're going to use these figures later. Okay. Um, depreciation is an expense. Ignore it. That is a debit balance. That's an expense. Ignore it. Doesn't go into the FP. These two will. They are both um, assets, non current assets. They go at the top of the FP. Opening inventory doesn't go into the FP. It goes into the income statement. So we can ignore. Expenses, purchases, we can ignore. They go into the income statement. We've got PLC, which is a liability. Revenue is income. It goes into the income statement, not the FP. We have SLC, which is an asset. VAT is not tested in AQA. Uh, VAT, you may know, can be an asset or liability, depending on if it's a debit balance or a credit balance. Here, it's a credit balance, so this is going to be a liability. Okay, so we've gone through all of them just there. I hope you can see that there. That's probably one thing I would do when doing a trial balance. Okay, so once we've done that, the next thing is drafting up the FP. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this. We don't need that actually behind there. And I need, I've got too many tabs open. I need that one there. Okay, so I'm just going to widen that. There you go. And using that, I'm just going to talk you through very quickly the FP. Okay, so I have this template already drawn out. You may want to pause the video now and have a got this question yourself. Okay, and I'm going to talk you through this um, now. So just to make life easier for me, I have this template that's already there. I have all the information that's written out. So we've got non-current assets. There's only machinery here. We've got current assets, closing inventory. Never put opening inventory in there. It's always closing. I have trade receivables, cash and cash equivalents. That's just another word for cash and bank together. So feel free to put them separately or together. Doesn't really matter. We've got trade payables, which is your purchase ledger control. You've got VAT and accruals. These are all your current liabilities. And then you have the subheadings, key headings, non-current assets, net assets, and then the finance by section. Okay. And really, the, the main difference between sole trade and partnership statements is this section here. Okay. But we'll look at the rest of it anyway. So, let's see if this works. So, we have machinery, the cost figure. Okay, which has come from here. Let's just move that along a bit more. There we go. Okay, hopefully you can see that there. So we have the machinery. We're looking at this section here, the accumulated depreciation, and we have the carrying um, amount, the net book value. Moving on to the current asset section, you have closing inventory, which is, there we are, trade receivables, at the bottom there, SLC, and the 5250 here is the bank and cash added up together. Add those two together, and you have the cash and cash equivalents. Okay, total those up, and then we move on to current liabilities. So we have trade payables, VAT, and accruals this section over here. 
Okay, so all we're doing is taking figures from here and putting it in. This should be very, very straightforward for you because you should have covered sole trader statements before partnership statements. So let's put those three figures in there. We have PLC, VAT at the bottom, and accruals is right at the top over there. Okay. We've got our total, 18200. Don't be too worried at this particular point about getting them in the right column. You'll see they, they really do vary as long as personally I would that's fixed. I would move current assets to the middle and then move to the left. There is no real right or wrong in this and the examining board aren't going to be too particular about this either. Okay. Moving on, we have net current assets. So this is CA minus CL thirty five one five oh. Net assets, you can either do this, 35150 plus that, so NCA plus the net current assets, or if you want, add your assets, 1 and 2, add those two together, minus current liabilities and minus non-current liabilities, what would be the opposite to that? Now, we don't have any of those, hence net assets is that plus that, minus that, okay, and net assets is all assets minus all liabilities. The last section, which is the main objective for this, is your capital and current accounts, and if we look at, if you just remember these figures over here, we've got 30 and 20, John and Kim, 30 and 20, and then you have the capital account figures which we calculated and in the question the way it's designed is they've said do what you got to do use these figures can't see that now use the 5750 and 6900 for your statement of financial position so having a look at this okay we've got 30 and 20 if you remember from the pre from the uh, trial balance that was up there before, and we have five seven five zero and six thousand nine hundred, and they're both credit balances. If they were debit balances, these two, then you would minus. Okay, you would minus. Total of fifty, total of twelve six five zero, and then you just total them all up. Okay. What I'll do is I'll just scroll down on here so that you can see the final picture of the trial balance. I can't squeeze everything in. Um, most of the information is there, the top title, etc., is are missing. That, if I zoom out any more, it's just going to be too small for you to see. Um, so I think that's just about perfect. Um, so you have the trial balance on the right-hand side. You've got the FP on the left-hand side. And like I said, the objective of this particular video is for you to understand how to use trial balance information, in particular capital, and current and transfer them to the finance by section okay like i said this is quite a straightforward question it's not a difficult question there is no adjustments that we need to do the information is readily available and you've just got to put it into the account okay um hopefully there will be um, another video coming out that will go through an income statement and the FP with a with a few more adjustments, so it will get gradually get more difficult before I start reviewing um, past papers. Okay, so hope you found that useful, and um, keep an eye out for any more videos coming out in the next uh, couple of days. Okay, thank you for listening.